In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Father, we ask you for your help. Explain to us Christmas. Help us to understand how we should live it. Give us a good time, time of joy, of singing, of understanding, and rejoicing in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we start by proclaiming the Gospel. From the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and the truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is the Gospel of the Christmas Day. And it's the Gospel of John. It's a little bit surprising that the Church chooses John's Gospel. The other Gospels, they present the story of Jesus' birth. Uh, there's a manger, there's shepherds, animals, there's Joseph, Mary, angels, and all, all that. But on the Christmas day, we read the Gospel of John. You could say that the three other Gospels, they report the birth of Jesus from a in a details level. They zoom, zoom in and they show what has happened. John, on the other hand, he pulls back. He zooms out. He looks at the wider perspective. John, who speaks at the end of his days, he reflects on the birth of Jesus from the entire history of his life, from everything that Jesus has achieved. And therefore, we also today will look at Christmas from that perspective, remote. Why do we celebrate Christmas? What has happened there? Why even today, people all around the world, they rejoice in this birth of Jesus. And this gospel says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God and was with God. And the word came to dwell among us, and the people who lived in darkness have seen light. And that's an interesting claim John makes. Before coming of Jesus, all humanity, everyone, lived in darkness. And when Jesus came, the light has shone. What is light then? What was the darkness everyone lived in? This gospel I proclaim does not give answer by itself. You have to look at the entire gospel of John to know the answer. And John, the way he writes is on the one topic he's interested in, and that's love. And John says that before Jesus came, people did not know truly love. They only knew the darkness and the shadows. There's a difference between uh, gray um, when it's a twilight, you, you, the sun is not up yet and there is some shadows and, and uh, not full darkness. 
but it's not yet the light. And that's what John compares all our love to love of Christ. It's true we have many loves in the world. We have love between the fiancés or between the man and the woman, between the couples. And we have a love of the mother loving the child and the parents loving children and children loving parents. But still, all those loves, they are always somehow, if I can use the word, not pure. Every love we have here on earth is somewhat mixed with other stuff. Boy loves a girl. Well, when he loves a girl, he also loves how he feels. He's important for a girl. She makes him feel great. Whenever he sees her, he's happy. He loves that happiness too. He loves to be important for someone else. Even the mother, when she loves a child, you could say is the strongest love we know on earth. There's still something very particular about that love. Because that mother loves her child, but she doesn't love the other children the same way. So why this particular child is loved differently than other children? Well, it's mine. He came of me. I want him or her to do well. She is joy of my life. I can't imagine my life without him or her. All those loves, there is self-love mixed with loving others. None of these loves, you could say, is pure from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's why exactly when Jesus, when Jesus came and appeared among us and dwelt among us, Jesus presented to us different type of love. And the gospel speaks about it. The God came to live among us. And you know, it's good to be God if any one of us had a chance to become a God, I would take it. I would take it. Imagine you know everything. You're never wrong. You can change anything. You're almighty. You never die. All the angels praise you. All Everything bows to you. You're the best. You're the most important. All of that. But God, when he became a man, he gave up all of that. He exchanged billions of angels who praised him for what? a bunch of shepherds. He exchanged his eternal life into human body that is weak, that feels pain, that gets tired. He knew everything and then he becomes a human and knows nothing. He's a baby, he's an infant and the mom and dad has to teach him how to speak. So you could say that God, by descending, by coming and li to live among us, he gave up everything that we dream of. And what did he gain? What did Jesus gain by becoming a human? Well, he gained nothing that he didn't have yet. God in heaven is perfectly happy. He has everything that you can dream of. And on earth, he just gave up lots of that. He lost respect. He lost even intimate relationship with God the Father he had in heaven. He became a fully human. So you could say that this act of becoming a man is an act of pure love. You give away everything that is precious to you, everything that you love and enjoy for nothing. I mean, nothing for yourself. You give it up for others so the others can have a great life. And, sin, and that's why John says, when Jesus came, it was a light. John said, I lived on earth. I experienced many loves. I've been a child. I loved the woman. Uh, I've seen love all around. But compared to what I've seen and observed in Jesus, this is like a darkness and a light. But one could say, okay, Jesus came and showed us act of pure love and that the pure love is is possible and that the love it's almost almost a different type of different kind on a level that is unimaginable but what does it has to do with me it's like imagine a child who draws and loves drawing and works hard for three weeks and paints a small painting and he's so proud and the mom says yes it's great you're amazing and the uh, child is very very happy about it well one day mom brings 
her to the museum, and in the Museum of Art, she discovers geniuses and other paintings, and then she turns and looks at her own painting, and she says, uh, I don't think it's that great. Maybe she goes home sad, discouraged, who knows? So we could say that God showed us what love is. And when he showed what love is, my love doesn't look that great anymore. It's basically little and nothing because in our love we get frustrated, jealous, angry, disappointed, all of that. So did Jesus show us this love to make us feel bad? No. This Gospel of John says it. When the light came, he gave us a power by power of God. From now on, those who accept the light, they can be born of God. In other words, when God became a man, he gave a power to all men who believe and accept him to become gods. Because also Jesus demonstrated what essentially it means to be God. God is not God because he's so mighty, all-powerful, and all of that. What makes God, if we can say it, God is his love, his pure love. And when you accept Jesus, when you believe in him, and when you walk the same path that Jesus walked, meaning going down, losing things, giving, ma giving up money, giving up uh, affections, uh, giving, la giving up greatness of this world, but you really, really follow the light into the service of others, of being last and the least in the name of love, then this light can live in you. You can love with God's love, with pure love. So you, here on earth, because of coming of Jesus Christ, you can do godly acts, the same act, pure love pure forgiveness, pure mercy, all of that was given to us in Jesus Christ. And that's why, even today, we celebrate the Christmas. We give glory to God. We rejoice because our life has been transformed. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for your Son, for his sacrifice, that he came to be with us, that he knows what we go through, that he understands us perfectly, profoundly, because he lived what we live. Help us to believe that the light can dwell in us, that the light can be in us, that our love can have no limits and give us a courage to pursue this love and to love the way your Son has loved. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas to everyone.